Hello, hello, hello. So let's hope we got all this right tonight. So let's see. hope the mic and everything's working right. If anyone is in here, let me know. Please. <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure if the mic and everything's working, so if you can hear me, let me know, please. Just talking to myself at the moment. Or is my internet going really, really slow? Okay, <laughs> my internet's going really, really slow, and my computer's not keeping up with everything. <laughs> yeah, let's see if I can keep up with it now. <laughs> hey, Dan, Nathan, <laughs> and the Constant Aquatics. Nice to meet you. <coughs> um, so I'll just let a few more people people come in before I start start talking about what I've um what fish I have. So tonight I am just going over my um list of invertebrates and fish and a few other things um like my web store opening opening tonight and a few other things so um so yeah i actually do surprisingly have 24 different types or species of fish without the individual types which i was quite shocked with actually um, so hopefully my computer will keep up now so just have a nice refresh um so I'll just give it a another minute or so and see if we can get any more people in here. Then we'll um then we'll start. Hi Alice, how you going? <coughs> yeah, so I have four invertebrates and so four shrimp and snails and oh, pardon me. Um, 20 different types of fish at the moment. Uh, if you include all subspecies of those fish, um, I suppose you could say I've probably got about uh, 24, 25 fish. We have a few more to come. So um, I'll just give it another few, uh, another 10 seconds or so, then I suppose I'll get started with the invertebrates. So I suppose just before we start, I'll post this again. But I have opened, or will be opening a web store um, straight after this live stream is finished. And anyone that um, subscribes before I actually open it, so before the end of this live stream, um, will be sent out a discount code that will give you give you 5% off for the first week um, that it's open. So until next next Sunday at 12 um, p.m., uh, 12 midnight. Yeah, Nathan, if you want, um, post it. I think most of them over there are, are mods anyway, so hopefully they'll come over shortly. Um. So I'll we'll just show you. <laughs> uh, yes, I do have some sponge filters, Dan. Um, there are a few different types. 
I have ordered some for myself to actually do reviews on them. So I'm just waiting for them to turn up, turn up now. They were on my test order. So there, there is some sponge filters on there. Um, actually, also this week I did actually reach 100 subscribers. So there is a video and I'll have to grab the link to that in a second. Um, on There's a video on my channel for the 100 subscribers. Um, there is a, a $30 giveaway uh, that can go to anything you guys want. All you have to do is post in the comments what you guys actually want um, want for that $30 and um, you will all go into the draw for that. <coughs> um, so, so yeah, so if you just go to that video and and um, I suppose comment on the on the video watch this one for the thirty dollars um he's going to the draw and that's not limited to australia that is worldwide um if i can't get something to you guys i will um i will give you just a thirty dollar amazon voucher or arrange for something to happen for you guys um but yeah this this competition is open to to everyone so I hope you guys all get involved in that. Um, so the next big milestone for me will be um, the 200 mark. So there'll be another giveaway for that, which I might put together a few products, a few products from my web store, which at the moment I'm only shipping to Australia, but I can probably arrange shipping worldwide. So we'll see how we go with that. So which comment am I taking again? <laughs> oh, hang on. Did I accidentally put that up or not? Oh, who put that up? I don't know. I don't think they'll put that one up. Oh, crap. I hate this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I am still getting used to this whole, whole live stream thing. So if I click the wrong button, things happen and... Uh, Half the time, I don't know what I've done. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Why won't this work? I don't know. For some reason, my computer's being stupid and I'm not getting to see all the comments. So, we'll try and keep up with you guys. But, <coughs> um, I suppose I'll get started with the with my um, list and first off we have the invertebrates so <coughs> first on the list is actually a mystery snail i did start with six of these guys with the whole intent on on breeding mystery snails for a bit of profit when i started um but for some reason i put all six in a tank and overnight all Bar one died. So at the moment I have one oh, pardon me. I have one um mystery snail left and it started off about the size of a ten cent piece. And now I'd quite gather it'd be um a little bit bigger than a golf ball. Well actually probably only the size of two golf balls. It's pretty big at the moment. Oh, pardon me. Um, so yeah, they, they were intended to, to breed out as a, a bit of a breeding project just to sell back to the local fish store for a dollar each. Um, but that didn't happen. How you going, Bodgy? Good to see you come over. I read I'm gassy the night and I'm sorry for that. So my next invertebrate is the good old cherry shrimp. Now I have a nice Skittle tank that... I have yellows and blues and yellows, blues, um, a couple of greens and browns and just about every color in one tank. Then another tank I have all my red coloration. So 
I've just got all my reds thrown into one basket. Um, I've got a couple that could be close to a fire red, but um, mostly just cherries and red reallys. I'll throw into one and just um, just growing out. So that tank is going absolutely nuts. Um, I can't count the amount of babies I have in that. Um, I started off with probably about five or six adults and now um, there is just babies everywhere in the tank and they're throwing yellows, they're throwing blues, they're throwing absolutely everything because they come from a Skittle tank to begin with. So they are just every colour under the sun. So I'm constantly going through and trying to pull the three-quarter adults adults out to try and keep um, the red coloration. And I'll, hopefully I'm getting there. I'm seeing less and less in that tank. So this is probably about the second generation I'm starting to breed now. But, yeah, they are going absolutely nuts in that tank. And um, the third invertebrate I have is um, Australian long-armed shrimp. So I've only just recently got these guys. Um, my dad does a lot of fishing, and in New South Wales, you're allowed to keep 200 of them for um, fishing purposes for bait. But they are actually a really good aquarium fish, and they do eat a lot of algae. So I've actually grabbed um, 10 or so of them to try and breed. <laughs> Hi, Josh. How you going? And yes, I am pretty gassy. Hey, Jason. <clears throat> oh, where are we? Okay, so yeah, the long arm shrimp I'm trying to breed up, and um, probably for probably for the reason of um, I just want to see if I can. A lot of people say you can't breed them in an aquarium, and I'm quite happily calling calling BS on that because I believe any fish or invertebrate you can breed in a tank as long as the conditions are right. So I'm going to breed them um, just to prove a point because I've seen it done in big tanks because my dad's done it in big tanks. Um, so so that's what's going to be, be happening there and I'll try and get some out to, to the aquarium hobby, I suppose. Um, they are very finicky. I have found that out. Um, just even transferring them from one tank to another, if the conditions aren't 100% right, they will stress out and die overnight. You can have the parameters exactly the same, but if the temperature's off a little bit, they stress out. And the fourth and last invertebrate I have is I've started to notice a few pond snails in my tanks, which by all means is a good thing. Um, Pond snails mean my tank's healthy. I don't have a lot of them at the moment, so I've been trying to keep on top of them. On top of them, so if I see one or two, I'm quite happy with that. And if I start seeing a lot, I know I'm feeding my tank too much. That's that's basically it. They just uh, they happen from imbalance, I believe. So yeah. <clears throat> so that's the four invertebrates I have or inverts or whatever you want to call them. So I suppose the next on the next to start with is my fish. So like I said, there is 20, 20 different species of fish I'm currently I currently have. Uh, sorry, um uh, species probably Yeah, there'd be twenty different species of fish with um with a few um subtypes I suppose. So first off is my white cloud mountain minnows. So the intention of trying to breed them up and get a nice sized colony, I think I have about 16 or so now, um, adults. I'm trying to breed them in a tub to try and build up their um, numbers. So in the summertime, I can release them into a pond and try and breed them outdoors all the time. Now that's going to be a bit of a challenge because no, I don't even have brine shrimp at the moment, Blake. <laughs> I'm still waiting on um on my setup for that to turn up. Oh, I suppose if you wanna wanna count vinegar eels, I have vinegar eels. <laughs> um 
<laughs> so where are we? Oh yeah, white cloud. So we're reading the white clouds to um, stock a pond outside. So I'm hoping to get over winter time in inside. I'm hoping to get turn that 16 into about 50 or 60 at least. Um, so I have the tank fairly heavily packed full of um, Java moss, so the babies and that have a chance to hide and, and grow out without the adults eating them. Um, so the next on the list is the honey grammy. So I originally got these guys just because I've never had kept them before, and I've had the like flame grammys and the other dwarf grammys like the coral blues and stuff like that, but they're always really aggressive. Pardon me. Damn, I am gassy tonight. Um, so I wanted to get some more gentler dwarf grammys, so I got them, and I happened to actually get a pair, so I might try and breed them breed them in the future. Um, my chocolate grammys, which is next on the list, actually were the same sort of thing. I spotted them in the fish shop and couldn't say no um he had two of them so i walked out with two and my local fish store i have i have um on the waiting list whenever he gets them in again i get first dibs at him um supposedly so he's just going to ring me up when um when they when they're on their way and i'll pay for them and Basically, when they turn up, he'll put them through quarantine, and after quarantine, they'll um, they'll they'll be mine. Basically, so we're just waiting for the borders and that to reopen, and them to get um shipped back into Australia. So, sparkling grammys were another one that I didn't have before, and just kept. So I've just got six of them. I'm daring my main display tank and they're just a nice little communal fish that I've never kept before and just like the look of. I just love their little blue eyes and speckly and speckly patterns. Um I find them really, really adorable to, to watch actually. Just the way they um cruise in and out of the driftwood and plants and sort of sort of get aggressive so it's actually quite funny to watch this little small fish taking on a discus to hunt it away from its log. It's it's quite funny to watch actually. Um so baiters. I actually have three um blue veil tail baiters. Um I've got two males and one female. They actually come with a, a fish tank I brought. I brought a twenty gallon fish tank for um just for purpose of having another tank and it was cheap. Um when I turned up to pick it up, I didn't actually realise that it was stocked. So I ended up with three betas or betas, whichever way you want to say it. Um, the tank come with the dividers to go to go in it to separate the the fish. Um, 3D background, all testing stuff, a heap of plants. It come with everything. Um, all I had was a photo of a bear tank for 50 bucks. So I said, yeah, I'll buy it. Um, because it said it come with a fully glass lid, so I went and brought it and and um and yeah, I ended up with nearly two hundred two hundred and fifty dollars worth of, of stuff by the end of it. Um, because they gave me all their all their um testing equipment, um, aquascaping stuff, basically everything. And all I thought I was buying was a bare tank. So I walked out of there extremely happy and I kept in touch with the the girl I brought her all off. Um, and I keep in touch with her and let her know that a that a fish is still going still going well and healthy. Um, the peppermint bristle nose. So I got these guys with the intent to breed um, breed, but at the moment they're just getting sort of shimmied from one tank to another for algae control. Um, I do get a bit lazy in my tanks and let the algae grow grow out a bit, so I just move them from one tank to another and let them gorge out on, on algae. I also feed them the good old algae wafers um, from Hikari. So they do get a, 
a balanced diet of algae, hikari, pellets. Um, I've also got another. Uh, oh, they seem to like the um, cichlid sinking pellets. So. Um, so yeah, they also take the cichlid sinking pellets. I see them munching down on them every now and then, so they get a balanced diet. So I'm not too worried about them. Um, we have a Siamese algae eater because I was having a lot of trouble with, um, uh, at the moment, Jason, my peppermints are probably about three to four inches long. So they're starting to get, get closer to. Um, maturity, I actually did only get them at a centimetre long. So they were basically fresh out of the cave cave when I got them. So we've had them for four months, four and a half months now. So, um, so they're, um, they're getting up there, which is actually quite funny because the person I got them off, um, I ran into them probably... Uh, three weeks ago, and they asked me how how the um like how my babies went, and I said, yeah, mine, my three are all all still fine and fine and dandy. And she goes, um, well, that's good to hear because all her babies died, and she hasn't been able to have them breed since. So, um, for some reason, probably about a week after she took took mine away, um, the rest of them rest of them died. So. So a bit unfortunate for her, but um, mine, are, mine are nice and healthy and <laughs> surviving well. So hopefully they keep going. <laughs> and yeah, they have packed on a fair bit of size. Um, Jason, like I said, I've been feeding them quite well. They do get um, uh, they get a bit of blanched carrot every now and then. They also get a bit of blanched cucumber and and stuff like that. And I actually have tried them on um, stinging nettles. <laughs> I've heard that's really good for them and shrimp as well. Um, so we've actually actually tried blanching them and, and giving them to them. So they seem to eat them all right too. Pardon me. But you've got to blanch them and, um, and make sure the, the stingers and that are all off them and soften them up like you do most vegetables but um yeah you just gotta be careful on how much you feed to them because um all the phosphates and all that actually fertilize your tank so you gotta be careful otherwise you end up with a massive algae bloom um so yeah the Siamese algae eater i got for the control of the black beard algae and the hair algae in one of my tanks so i got him when he was probably about an inch and a half long and now he's getting close to to three and a half inches long um the peppered corridoris i've got three of them um i've always liked always liked corys i usually always got the bronze or the albino bronze um so this time we just went for something a little bit different um, I know they are another easy one to breed, so um, in the future I'll try, try and breed them when I get the fish room up and running. Um, angelfish. I recently got a few angelfish. Um, I ended up getting four. I got three um, gold pearl scales, uh, pearl scale angels, and one platinum pearl scaled angel. Um, and <laughs> hey, Blackie. Um, so, so yeah, with the with the angels, I just got them to fill out my um my display tank and and give me something a little bit different to look at, other than a heap of small fish. Um, I do have a discus in that in that tank as well, which is actually the the next one on my list here. Um, but I'm a little bit dubious with discus because, um, I, like I said before, I get pretty slack on, on maintenance with my tanks. So 
every now and then the um the uh, parameters of the tank do change a little bit and i tend to get slack on my water changes where i just put the hose in the top of the tank and and fill it up so if i take too much water out i actually cold shocked um a couple of uh, one of my discus sort of about a month ago so when it started getting cold i didn't i didn't think about the the hose being outside and the fact that the temperature was cold outside and just filled the tank up and it was probably a 40 percent water change and yeah i cold shot the, the poor discus so unfortunately there was nothing i could do to, to save it i did try but um but unfortunately I, I lost that one so i've still got one discus left and he seems to be getting along all right with the with the angels so well, everybody's getting along all right. We'll we'll keep him in there. If not, I'll I'll move him to a discus only tank and put him up with a few uh, with the uh, probably my honey grammys or something like that. I'll put him in with his own. Hey, Gla. Yeah. Um, as soon as I as soon as I did it, I didn't notice what I'd done. Um, probably about half an hour after putting the water into the tank, that um, I noticed he was starting to starting to play up. So I took him out and threw him straight into a into a warmer tank, and um, unfortunately, he didn't he didn't recover. So unfortunately, we lost him. Um, so the next on the list is the German Blue Blue Ram. Um, I've only got a female at the moment. Um, it was supposed to be a male, but um, it's turned out that it's a female. Um, Fish store said he was probably a good 60% certain it was a, a male, but at the time I got him, he was only only pretty small. So I don't think he had his full, full coloration yet, and the shop owner stuffed up. <laughs> um, so... I am thinking in the future I might I might get her a male and maybe breed them, but I'm not 100% sure on breeding rams. Um, I've heard they're a little bit finicky and I've had no experience in in breeding um, cichlids yet, so I'll probably be getting some cribs, uh, some cribensis soon and I'll start off with them and I'll slowly work my way up to, to breeding rams. Um, so the next on the list is guppies. So my fish room isn't complete without guppies. Um, at the moment, I have two strains of guppies. I have um, some half black black guppies, which were supposed to be neon blue guppies when they turned up, but they weren't. Um, they were sold to me as neon blue guppies, but they turned out to be half black guppies with a tinge of blue. So, so that, and I actually did get eventually get some neon blue guppies. I got one male and three females, but unfortunately, my male has passed away. But my females are pregnant at the moment, so I'm hoping I get a few fry out of those and can start my colony with the babies. <clears throat> um, I have a couple of balloon mollies that, um, to be honest, I can't even remember where I got them from. Um, I think I just grabbed a few, a few different fish when I first set up my um, fish tanks again for um, a four-year-old stepson. He wanted a few fish, so I just went to the fish shop and grabbed a few that looked pretty. And I think the blue mollies have been been with me ever since. Um, they're both females, so. Um, so that I don't have to worry about breeding or anything like that. So they're just in with my, um, basically my mixed tank of, I don't know what to do with at the moment tank, um, which has the fem uh, half black female guppies in that as well. It also has my neon tetras. Um, I'm just about over my neon tetras. Um, Nearly every couple of weeks, I'm treating them for fungal infections. Um, they have spent more time in a quarantine tank with medication than they have in any any display tank I have. So I'm just about ready to get rid of the 
the Neon Tetras, and I also have one Cardinal Tetra that snuck in with the Neon Tetras when I brought them. So I have one Cardinal Tetra and four or five Neon Tetras left out of ten because they keep getting a fungal infection and passing away, unfortunately, even though I keep using fungal medication. It clears up. Um, I leave them in the medication for another week or two and take them out. Then three weeks later, it's back again. So, <clears throat> um, so yeah, Neon Tetras, I'm just about had it with. <laughs> um, so I've replaced the Neon Tetras out of my display tank with some Rami Nose Tetras because they're a lot more hardier and... And I actually prefer them a little bit better. They seem to school together better. They um, they, they just seem to swim along. And they're a little bigger. So in the angelfish that they grow up, they don't potentially become snacks. Um, and one goldfish, which is humbly named, named Nemo. Again, the four-year-old stepson wanted a Nemo. And I didn't have a saltwater tank, so we ended up with a fantail goldfish called Nemo, which is currently swimming in my 1,000-litre IBC, um, basically seeding the tank for um, Australian bass. So, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's where the goldfish is, and that's where the goldfish probably will stay until the um, other fish turn up, then I'll have to try and find a, a new tank for it. And so we'll just get back to the chat and see if I can follow it. Um, so it's there. It's there. This one not working. Yeah, that's working now. <coughs> um, yeah, with the Neon Tetras, I've I've never had much luck with them here in Australia. Oh, with the Australian ones. Um, so uh, I think this will be the last lot of Neons I've got. Every single batch of Neons I've had since I was a kid have always died from the same. Um, yeah, they are tank, tank bred bass. Um, they're coming in as inch and a half finlings, um, hatched out of a, out of, um, hatchery down near Melbourne. They were supposed to be here about a week and a half ago, but now I've been told they're not turning up until either the, six, the 13th or 16th. And that could change depending on whether the person has enough sales up around the Bathurst area in New South Wales because that's where I'm from. So we're waiting to see if there's enough enough sales to see if the bloke will come up. Hi, Prony. Good to see you here. Um, what do we have left? Oh, my killifish. <laughs> How could I forget my killifish? Um, so... I have um, some blue panchex killifish that I'm currently trying to breed at the moment. Um, I actually have two eggs that I've got in the last two days. So they're in a breeder box. So <laughs> oh, I don't think we need to go in with the worms here, Prawny. <laughs> I think you've had enough. <laughs> Uh, yes, I have answered why I keep shrimp, but I can go back to that in a second, Prawny. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm currently breeding them um, the blue um, blue panchex killifish, and I also have some clown panchex killifish that um, are just about ready to breed. I think um, the males have coloured up nicely. They're starting to spar between each other and chase the females around. So. I've noticed the females in the last couple of days have started to um, get um, nice fat bellies. So 
<laughs> um, they're starting to get some nice fat bellies, so we'll hope that they can they can breed um breed shortly. So that's that's all the fish I'm keeping at the moment. So I'll, I'll just do a quick recap. So my invertebrates are my mystery snails, my um, cherry shrimp, um, some long arm shrimp. So the reason why I'm keeping the keeping the shrimp prawny is um, the cherry shrimp started off as a bit of a breeding project, um, just to see if I could breed them because I've never bred bred shrimp before, never kept shrimp before, and I found that um that the whole set and forget seems to work really, really well. Um, I just filled the tank up with rainwater, um, got some active, um, some shrimp safe active um, substrate and planted a few plants in it, um, big ball of java moss and threw 10 shrimp in there and I've just let it go nuts. I don't think I've done a water change on that tank since I set it up nearly three months ago. All I do is top it up with rainwater. Um, it, it just goes goes nuts. Um, so I started off with, like I said, ten adults, and now I'm up to I think. Oh, I can't count. Um, yeah, There's just that many babies in it. It's not funny. If you have a look at my vlogs um, or in a couple other videos, I think I've glanced over the tank and just said how many babies there are. They are absolutely hundreds of them. Um, and the long arm shrimp, that's a new breeding project I've started to try and get um, some long arm shrimp into the hobby as well as just to prove a point that you can breed them because a lot of people say you can't in tanks and I reckon you can. Um, and also if I get a heap of them, they will be really good food for the bass um, as they grow. Um so then we have just that the pond snail. So that's the four invertebrates I keep. And the fish we have the white clouds, the honey grammies, the chocolate grammies, sparkling grammies, the betters, the pepper membranosos, the Siamese algae eater, the peppered corys, the um, gold scale, uh, gold um, pearl scale angelfish, the platinum pearl scale angelfish, um, a discus. German blue ram female. Oh, what I actually missed out on the first time round is um, I have six rosa barbs, um, gold rosa barbs. So um, that's just a bit of a display tank in my um, kitchen at the moment. That's where the bedders were actually housed originally. Now the bedders are spread between my other tanks, um, depending on their attitude and aggression. So the female went into the the mixed, mixed one, um, a mixed tank, and the um, placid male went into my display tank, and the fiery male, he went into a tank on his own, or into a 30-litre um, tub on his own. Hi, HC Aquatic. Oh, Aqua. <coughs> Pardon me. Or should I just say Jesse? <laughs> um, so where were we? Oh, yeah. Um, so the and we just have the guppies, the balloon mollies, the neon tetras, cardinal tetras, rummy nose tetras, goldfish, blue panchecks, and the clown panchecks, summing up the list. So fish I will be hopefully receiving shortly will be a pair of cribs, um, crabances. We're going to try try and breed those and get them up around my area because um, I don't see many of them in the fish shops. So um, <laughs> so yeah, we're going to try and try and breed those. Those um, I've got some golden wonder um, pan checks coming, I hope, and some daisy rice fish. So, um, so they're all breeding projects that I'm hoping to, to get going going shortly so so I think that sums up sums up my list of, of fish and, and why I'm keeping them 
<laughs> Prawny, if you want to pay for the lungfish, I will keep them. <laughs> but unfortunately, I don't have the tanks nor the wallet space to be able to to have any of those. I have seen um, uh, cherry rosy barbs, um, but I do like the, the golden ones a little bit better. Yes, there might there might be room for um a salt a saltwater tank in the fish room dam when I get it get it up and running. Um, I'm gonna have lots of room. I think I've worked out that I can possibly have close to 60, 60 tanks spread between um, twenty gallons, um, yeah, twenty gallon, ten gallons. Um, I think. I'm just trying to remember what size they are. So basically your two foot tanks and your one and a half foot tanks um, will be the majority of the of the size, so your ten and twenties. Um, I do have one six foot by one foot by one and a half foot, so just smaller than a standard six foot tank. And I have a couple of four foot tanks at the moment. And I have a four foot by two foot by two and a half foot, I think, that I have to pick up. So um, yeah, my room is just smaller. My room's um, six meters by three meters. Um, but yeah, I've tried to plan it out so so all my tanks will fit in there with what I want, with room to put a few more in. So there's there's definitely room for um more tanks in that fish room when I'll be finished. So um, we'll definitely be looking to expand, expand eventually. So um, I think just purchasing close to um, 40 or tanks is going to be a, a big hurt on the, a big hurt on the, on the pocket. So I am saving up for that, that big expense. Um, I'll probably be buying them at 10 tanks at a time. So um, we'll see how we go there. Um, so some other exciting news that's happening with my channel and and everything else com um, coming up is, as I mentioned at the start of this stream, um, straight after this this stream, I am, I am launching a... Um, bit of a website um, just to sell um, various aquarium items um, with the hopes that eventually I'll be able to sell sell fish in that that I breed and plants in that that I grow um, on that website as well so um, and there is a bit of a discount um, happening for the first week that um, that I open, which will be straight after this live stream. Um, so anyone that um, subscribes to the mail list mailing list um, before the end of the stream, I will be emailing you with a um, discount code for the um, for the website. Um, I am also starting up a, a Patreon, a Patreon page, um, for the channel, which will, um, get everyone that signs up a permanent discount to the store. Um, we'll also give you, um, the chance to see Patreon only live streams, um, videos before I release them onto YouTube. Um, all the bloopers and everything from the videos, and I must admit there is a heap. Um, uh, so yeah, there's there's three different tiers. Um, first tier giving you um, two and a half percent off everything. Um, the second tier giving you five percent off everything, and the third tier giving you ten percent off. Um, so they are unfortunately in 
American dollars. So it's five dollars American, ten dollars American, and fifteen dollars American. Um, which I'll try and I, I was going to try and change to Australian, but each week um, the conversion rates change and it's never never the same. <clears throat> Unfortunately, so I can't I can't really change that back. But like I said, um, there will also be a I think it's going to be a six foot tank that I um. I do, and all Patreon members will get a chance to decide what actually goes into that tank, how it's set up, what happens with it. Um, the White Cloud Fry, my first batch, didn't make it. I don't think I had the food. Um, I don't think they were eating properly because I didn't have any live food for them. Um, so since then, I've actually got vinegar eels, and I'm just waiting on the on the next lot of fry to try to come along um so i just decided to try and bulk breed them in a um i've got them in a 50 liter tub at the moment that's packed full of java moss and stuff like that so um we're just trying to trying to breed them that way at the moment and see if i can get some fry that way to grow up if i can't i'll go back to the to the separate separate method again um so yeah unfortunately they three that I had had or the few that I had hatch out um, didn't seem to make it past a week so um, the infusoria culture I made um, it, it crashed so unfortunately I didn't get any get any infusoria um, and yeah I didn't have any vinegar eels that hadn't turned up so the first the first batch was a crash um, my neon tetra breeding project it was a crash I didn't even get eggs out of them after about a week in the in the tub i didn't see any breeding behavior nothing so um i gave up on it for a while um so yes yeah, si since that i've actually gone out and brought um some hikari tropical first bites um i've got some vinegar eels i've also got some frozen cyclops and stuff like that so the next lot of babies i get i hopefully will be a lot more prepared um my previous breeding experiences were all with live bearers, so guppies, mollies and all that, which basically eat ground up flake food straight away. So um, I was a little bit a little bit unprepared. Unprepared for all that. Um, <coughs> uh, so yeah, we're a little bit unprepared for all that. So um uh <laughs> Usually I just go to the fish shop, Dan. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've got, Jesse. I just got um the freeze dried, freeze dried stuff. So, um, <laughs> <coughs> so. Um, that seems to be working really well on my um, clam killifish at the moment. So I'm actually glad I had, I had that sort of stuff because they turned up a lot smaller than I thought they were going to be. And they basically have just been eating my fry food constantly. So um, that's basically all I'm going to be able to feed them. So. <laughs> I can't remember what the Cyclops was now. Um, <laughs> damn, Blackie, now you got me thinking. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, the clown killifish, I haven't got any fry yet. Um, when I got them, they were about a centimetre long. So, now they're about um, two and a half centimetres to an inch long and um, the males have coloured up nicely. The females have um, packed on some weight and are starting to, look, um, starting to look nice and fat. So they're actually starting to show some breeding behaviour. So we're hoping that they, they breed. They're in with my um, shrimp tank at the moment. So um, with a heap of floating plants and that. So... 
So we're hoping that they um. So we're hoping that we get we get lucky there and they breed. So I'm hoping I can get some fry out of them too. Like um, again, that's a fish that I've, you you don't see out where I am. Um, you might see them in the city in that in a pet shop, but you won't see them in a pet shop out here. So and the the fish shop owners won't get them because they're not going to spend spend the money on getting a fish that they have no idea where it's going to sell. And most of the time they don't have a fish tank to put them in um, because they are so small. They get eaten by just about everything. You've got to have a small nano tank to hold them. So a, lo a lot of aquarium shops won't have them because they're not going to sell because no one wants them because they're so small. Yes, they are a lovely, pretty little fish, but <laughs> I just want a full colony of them. <laughs> I love watching them hunt, hunt the cyclops and, and float around after the vinegar reels and stuff like that. It's, it's good watching them. Um, <coughs> so, uh, what else we got? Uh, so, yeah, so, so the fish store launches, right? Basically, as soon as the, I'll uh, probably about 10 minutes after the live stream finishes, I'll be launching the, the website. Um, I'm pretty sure all my, um, T's are crossed, and I's are dotted. Dotted with all that, I've spent way too much time. And in... um, the blue mollies breed fairly well when I used to have um, when I used to breed them. Um, at the moment, I'm not breeding any. I probably will when I get the fish room up and going. Um, I've been trying to trying to limit my breeding projects. I have a lot that I want to do, but I'm trying to put on on the back burner and just at the moment get the fish and just hold the fish until my fish room is ready to go, um, which I'm hoping will be done in the next two to three months, um, weather permitting and other projects permitting because I have to build a renovation on the side of my house before I can um, build the fish room, uh, which is why I'm actually building the framework of my fish room first. And... Um, building the loft on top of it that's going to go on top of my fish room so I can basically get all the junk on the floor of my shed up onto the loft so I can build framework for the house in my shed. Um, so I can just carry it all over and, and put it all up in one in one day sort of thing. Um, so I can So I can try and do that. Pardon me. There I am, Gassy, tonight. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> well, I reckon they're easy, Jesse. <laughs> I just put males and females in the same tank with a heap of... Um, wisteria or, or java moss or something like that and I don't know two months later you have babies um, <laughs> I don't know how you can kill them they're hardy little fish <clears throat> yeah I reckon they're hardy little fish they go, they're easy to grow um Nearly the same as guppies for me. <laughs> But yeah, I have found um, unless you get them from like a, a I'd say a store that I, that you would know um, probably imports them or sells a lot of them. That's always got stock turning over. Um, I think you'll find. Um, find that a lot of them are inbred in um, people's aquariums and they just take them down and dump them on the fish store and get a bit of fish food or something for them. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, I think they're just, um, just got a bad batch, batch there, Nathan, because I've never had any trouble with them and most times you just throw them in a, 
and throw them in a um in a tank and let them go. So for any of those people out there that are interested in checking out interested in checking out the Patreon thing that I've got going, I'll post the link for that. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, I hate slow computers. Um, oh, no. No, no, no. Don't tell me I lost it. There we go. Yep, when you push the wrong button, it always works well. Copy, not paste. Okay. Let's try and copy that. Oh, I love slow computers. And the rain and that around here isn't helping much either, so I'm actually lucky enough to, to get the stream going. Um oh uh, yeah, my computer wants to be as slow as hell at the moment. When it comes back I'll um I'll I'll send you the I'll send you the link. Um for the for the Patreon, so Oh, crap. Catch up. <laughs> Was your um, water water soft? Because they do like a hard water, a bit like a um, guppy. So they do like a bit more minerals and stuff in their, in their, in their water. So... So that could be a reason why why they died. Okay, so my computer's back. Yay! <laughs> so the link I'm posting through now it's um it's for the Patreon. Um, the next link will be for the. Um, for the website so like I said guys as soon as this stream finishes everyone that's pre-subscribed will be getting um, a 5% discount code that lasts a week so any sales within the next week um, uh, we'll get um, we'll get 5% off um, and that can be combined with with the Patreon discount, um, so that five percent will actually go on top of if you are a Patreon member and you get the permanent discount. Um, that will go on top, top of that. So um, that's just something to think about. Um, but unless there's any more questions, I might be wrapping that up very shortly. Just trying to catch back up this chat. I haven't dealt with the pet shops down there, so I can't really comment on the, on this, what's going on in the chat. So um, if there's nothing else, guys, I think we might wrap it up now. Um, it's been an hour, so surprisingly enough, I can talk to my talk to myself at looking at a camera for um, an hour, and I um, really don't know how I can do that. Um, so... Thank you guys for coming along and 
and putting up with me um up for so long so so we might call it call it quits there for the night guys and i'll catch you next monday at the same time and we'll try and come up with a another topic topic to talk about um so i think i've just about caught up on everything that um i'm doing here and what fish i keep um so um next week i'll i'll try and um come up with a little bit more more of a fun topic um and might go over something else so if you um want to hear a topic uh me cover a topic or something like that um either leave it in the comments after after the video or um just comment on one of my other videos um so if you haven't already make sure you go check out that um 100 subs subs video for your chance to win 30 dollars worth of um free stuff basically um to enter all you have to do is be subscribe be a subscribe member uh subscribed um youtube yeah be subscribed on youtube and comment comment what you would like to receive um, with a value of up to thirty dollars, um, that can be anywhere in the world. So, um, mind you, it is Australian dollars. So, um, America might be, I think it could be twenty five or something. Um, so, so we'll um, catches catches next Monday, and thanks for coming along. Uh, it's going to be slow and stupid like it was last week. <laughs> oh. When my computer finally catches up with everything, guys, we'll end the broadcast. <laughs> right, yeah, catches all. <laughs>